Hey crafty friends, Christina here with you from Sunny Day Memories. So for this month, the month of June, we are going to be exploring the beautiful, simply gorgeous uh, paper collection called Mediterranean Blooms from Stampin' Up. So if you have the catalog, you can find this collection on page 34 and 35. It not only shows the paper collection that we're gonna be working with, the Design of Series paper here, it shows the coordinating stamp and dies and the embellishments. Um, so let's go ahead and look a little closer at these papers. So you get 12 different designs and six of them are going to be your citrus themed, which you've got your lemons and your oranges and you've got the combination of the two on some of these papers. You'll notice that some of them have a larger image here so that you can use the coordinating dies to actually cut them out of your paper, while some of them are more concentrated and more detailed, like you've got these daffodils here that are more concentrated. And then when you flip the papers over, you've got these beautiful, cool blues, these like tile images that you have on the papers. So you've got a great assortment to work with um, between the two different citrusy looks and the cool tile looks. Okay, let's go ahead and look at what we're gonna be creating this week. So we are gonna be actually creating three cards that are very similar, but slightly different. I'm calling it a three-in-one card um, because design, because like I said, you're gonna get the three different ones that look different, but it's just all using the same papers and we're cutting at the same time. And so it's a super simple process and really fun to do. And there's a couple tweaks that you can do to it to kind of make it a little bit unique each time if you so desire. So. You want to start out with three pieces of paper. Um, you can have, I like to do it with two pieces of pattern and then one solid, so that way I can have my sentiment stamped on the solid. But if you had three pieces of pattern and you wanted to do that and then maybe add like a die cut with your sentiment, you could absolutely do that. So the three pieces all measure three and three quarters wide by five inches tall. And so you're gonna put them together and then you're gonna grab your paper trimmer. And so I don't, um, I'm not really precise on this, but I know some people like to have exact measurements. So I'm gonna just kind of look at this. So it's one inch here and one and a half on the side. So what you're doing is you're doing angled cuts. And like I said, you're cutting all three at the same time. So I like to just use the lines that are on my paper trimmer as a guide. Um, you could take a pencil and you can make little marks on your left and right hand side of your paper. But like I said, we're just going to go ahead and kind of eyeball. So I did just a quick measurement there. You saw I took my ruler. And so the left-hand side was at, um, I'm going to have it at one inch. Let's see, twist it here the right way. So this is going to be at one inch going up there. And this bottom one was at one and a half, I believe. So you've got that angle going like that. And if you look at my sample, that's going to match up, right? You can see that it's more narrow here on the one end and it's more wide on the other. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hold down the rail here so that we can cut through all three layers. And so you've got your first cut. So I'll just show it to you here. It's not gonna be exact, but it's pretty close there actually because I did do that measurement. And so that's your bottom panel of your cards. And you've done, we've done all three pieces at once. See, so you've got your daffodils, you've got your lemons, and you've got your solid cardstock. And one thing to note is if you are using pattern paper that is directional, you might wanna keep that in mind as you're working with it. I chose patterns here that were kind of, um, there's a lot of movement in it, so it didn't really matter how it was placed. So now I am left with this chunk here that we need to do another cut to get the two different separate pieces. So again, I will go ahead and just quickly eyeball, or with my ruler, sorry, not eyeball. So it's about two and three quarters and another one inch. So we're gonna put this in here, make sure that all three are lined up and you've got it two and three quarters and then the other one is at one, so that's gonna go down here. So just using those points, those lines on my paper trimmer is gonna help me do that. And so then just so you can kind of see if you're visual like I am, you can kind of take your paper and you can kind of see here that it is wider here on this side and it's more narrow here when I cut. That just helps reassure you that you've got it all going the way you want. And then what you're gonna see here, let me move this out of the way, is you've got your three panel pieces to your card. So it's kind of almost like a puzzle. Then what you wanna do is you wanna take each of the top pieces and separate them. You're gonna to wanna to separate out your middle sections and you're gonna be making sure that you don't have anything that matches. Like I wouldn't wanna go like this because I've got two of the basic white 
and that doesn't work, right? So we're gonna switch that to have the lemons over there. We're gonna have our basic white here, and then we're gonna finish off, and we're gonna take the daffodils over here because there's no daffodils in that section. We're gonna take our lemons over here to this one because we didn't have one in there, and then we're gonna finish like that. So now you can see the start of those three cards in play. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stamp on our panels here, the basic white, and I'm using early espresso, and I'm using the layering leave stamp set here. I'm using the thank you so much sentiment because it's always good to have some thank you cards. And it's nice because this is kind of a great way to do a bunch of cards. It's kind of like your bulk creating without too much work. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my foam mat in here so I can do this and you can see. So I'm just gonna go ahead and ink up my thank you so much stamp. And then you just decide where you want it. Do you want it towards the thin side of that cut? Do you want it over here at the wider side? So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the wide side. And we've got that first one done. So that's that bottom panel. We're gonna go ahead and bring this here. Again, you've got your wide side and you've got your narrow side, just deciding where you want that thank you so much to go. So I'm just getting some ink on there. I'm gonna go to the narrow side here on this one. And there's really no rhyme or reason to how to do it. It's just what you, you want to do with yours and how you want it to look. And it's nice because all three look a little bit different, but they also have that similarity in them. Okay, next what you're going to need are three bases to go behind those panels. And while I did the garden green for my first one, I wanted to show you a little variety. So I chose to do the um, curry color. Um, and while this isn't the actual yellow in here, it's the daffodil, I wanted it to be a little bit slightly different just so it was a richer tone. So it'd really bring out those yellows really nicely. So that's kind of a trick that you can do when you are working with your colors is bring in a slightly different tone of that color and then it just kind of enriches the project as a whole. So you don't always have to stick with exactly the color that is in your paper. Just um, if you've never thought to do that, that's something that you might wanna consider. So now we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna start gluing pieces together. So there's actually two different ways and there might be more that you can do this. If you notice, I left a slight border in between my panel pieces here. You could have them glued all the way up against each other. Either way is gonna look really nice. And so you're gonna kind of do kind of a dry run here and just kind of placing it down on your base just to kind of get a sense of how much room you have to work with. And so then once you've got that, then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna start gluing it down. So I like to use a tape runner so that I can go ahead and I have the ability to move it around and it's not stuck down initially. So you're gonna kind of leave a similar border on the bottom and the two sides. You're gonna actually have probably a little bit more on the side edges than you want on the bottom just so that you have enough wiggle room if you wanna leave a little bit of space between the three panels on your card. And so I tend to do my, after I put them down kind of as a dry fit, I tend to glue down my top and bottom pieces first, and then I go in with my middle section last. Uh, I know some people probably might like to do their middle section first and then balance it out after that. There's no real right or wrong. It's whatever you feel comfortable with, but that gives you a couple of options on how to do it. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave that space again because I think it looks nice. I like to have it kind of broken up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take another panel here and I'm gonna do the same thing with the remaining two. All right, so now you can see that I've got three different panels here ready to go on my card. And I just want to point out how different it does look than the green. It just really gives it a nice change. So that's another way to really maximize this design is you could do several of them. And depending on the colors that are in your pattern paper, you could have them look very different by having a different colored layered cardstock behind that piece, which is a fun, different way to change it up. So then next you're gonna need three card bases. And so I did mine as a top fold. And to do that, then they are four and a quarter wide by 11 long, so then you can score it at five and a half. If you wanted it to be a side fold card, you would just go ahead and do the same thing, only it would be eight and a half by five and a half, and then you'd be scoring it at four and a quarter. So it's completely what you are looking for in your card design and how you want it to be. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this to the center of my card base, and I'm just doing this basic white so it helps pop out the little bit of white flowers that are in the, um, with the lemons and also the sentiment here that I have in the white. And I'm gonna do that for all three of them. So I've now finished going ahead and matting these all. So now they are complete cards. You could leave them just as they are. I think they look great. They don't need any extra embellishments because there is a lot of activity going on with these patterns that I chose. But if you wanted to add a little bit of sparkle like I did here in these sample uh, cards, you could add the basic rhinestones here 
And what I did for that was I just went ahead and I took um, one of the large ones and then I took a medium sized one and one of the smallest ones here. And I'm actually just creating kind of a star, not star, sorry, a triangle effect. So it's really focusing you in on the sentiment here. Uh, nothing tricky with that, but it does add a nice little touch of that bling, that sparkle. But like I said, you could leave it without anything on it as well. And like I said earlier in the video, you could also have three patterns and you could add a little die cut that has your sentiment on there as well and maybe add some ribbon. There's so many different options that you could do with this kind of design. Um, so what I would love to hear is if you prefer the crushed curry with the nice yellow, helping that yellow pop in here, or if you like it to kind of be a little bit more subtle with the garden green, leave us a comment, let us know, we'd love to hear. I hope that you've learned a new trick um, as well as a fun new design for making your cards today. And until next time, stay crafty.